What's the word, y'all? Yes, you see what I'm rocking, man. Big Denver Nugget game. No, no, honestly, I didn't care who won today's game. I just so happened to have a Denver Nuggets jersey. And Twitter is about fun. So I took a picture of myself in this jersey and tweeted it. And a lot of people were upset with me. Yes, but that's that's what we're here for. It made me laugh. It made me feel joy. So I'm okay with it. Uh, so game seven just wrapped up literally like the final buzzer ended. And as right here on my screen, Jamal Murray and Jokic are talking in the post-game interview. I don't know what they're saying. So uh, I just want to preface that because it may take some time for me to get this video out. I just want to let y'all know um, that that I haven't seen any post-game interview from Kawhi, Paul George, Doc Rivers, any of that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just as fresh off the dome talking about this series. I want to congratulate the Denver Nuggets for pulling it off again. Uh, me and my guys were talking about this before Game 7 started, but, like, when your back is against the walls like theirs was going into the series or, or when you're down 3-1, you really have nothing to lose. So there's no nerves involved. There's no nothing, right? These guys just came out and they play basketball. But on the opposite side, you being that team, you're up 3-1. You go into a game five, you're like, okay, let's put this away. We don't want to give them no hope. And then you lose game five, you're like, no big deal. We still got game six. And then you, you lose game six, especially in the fashion that the Clippers did, game seven, you got to come out shaking at least a little bit because you don't want to be known as that team to be added to the list of teams that blew a 3-1 lead, especially as the favorite. And that's exactly what the Clippers did. So shout out to Jamal Murray and Jokic, man. Two incredible performances from them. But it goes deeper than that. If I'm looking at this box score just to remind myself on some of the things, Jeremy Grant had a really good game for them. Um, I'm actually super happy to see Gary Harris out there providing good defense and contributing. I mean, 14 points for Gary Harris. I mean, they would take that any day of the week. Mike Malone would be super happy if he could get that every single night. So shout out to everybody on that side. Um, Coach Malone for getting these boys ready and everything. Now we got to talk about the Clippers side because, I mean, I think this might be the title of this video, but they are one of the most disappointing teams in the recent b basketball history. I don't want to say all the basketball history because I don't know of, of team of this magnitude in the 80s doing whatever they did. But think back, think back before the season even started, before we had any tip off whatsoever, right? Uh, there were four teams that were in major conversations to be contenders. Again, this is before basketball started. There was the Clippers at number one. A, the, the voters at ESPN, the basketball experts at ESPN, 54% of them were like the Clippers are winning the championship. Then second was the Bucks. Third was the Philadelphia 76ers. You know what? I'm laughing at it now, but that wasn't crazy when the season started. The 76ers had a lot of talent, and they, they had did some things in the offseason that we thought was going to work, and it just didn't. Um, and I say we because I also believed in the 76ers going into the series, I mean the season, and well, you see how that ended. And then the last one was the Lakers. And three of those teams are already gone before the conference finals even starts. But the Clippers were at the top of the top, right? So there's a, there's a few ways I, I kind of want to think about this. I kind of want to give them somewhat the benefit of the doubt because usually when these teams are put together where you got two stars playing together for the first time, it usually, and I say usually because it's not the case always, it usually takes a year. Right, it usually takes a year. The first time the Heatles got together, they lost to to JJ Barea in the in the finals. Right, um, uh, Super Team. I want I don't want to say Super Team Lakers because a lot of these guys are like forty years old. But the other they had Gary Payton, Karl Malone, alongside Shaq and this and that. They made it all the way to the finals, but ultimately came up short. That's another disappointing team. But something those teams have in common is that they made it to the finals. This team was the heavy favorite going into the year and couldn't get out of the second round. That is insane. And you know what? They were still the heavy favorite until like four nights ago. And they couldn't get out of the second round. That is so insane to think about. And you know what? I don't want to be the guy to do this because I like Doc Rivers, but he might be on the hot seat. He might be gone. Maybe by this time this video is out, people are already speculating that Doc Rivers is gone because he's thrown, he's blown three, three, one leads in the playoffs. And that's kind of unacceptable. I think two of them were with the Clippers and he had one beforehand. And I think that was the Orlando Magic, if I'm not mistaken. Like his, his first coaching job when he won coach of the year. But I, again, I could be mistaken there. This is all off the top of the dome. There's no research involved because that would make it boring. You know what I'm saying? That would make it boring if I was doing research. So he might be he might be gone. He might be gone. And just on paper, this team had everything, everything you would want. You got these two stars. Kawhi Leonard had just won a championship. You know what? Going into game seven, I thought Kawhi was going to do exactly what he did in the game seven against Philly. In that game, he took like 40 shots. I thought he was going to come out and be like, nobody is going to prevent me from winning this game. And you know what? He ended up taking 22. He just happened to hit six of them. So, so like, I mean, overall, man, just, just a terrible performance from him and Paul George. 
That's what it boils down to. I mean, obviously, you would love to see your sixth man of the year. I mean, Montrez gave him 20, but I think a couple of those points were, like, when the game was already over. Overall, the series, Montrez Harrell was not good. Uh, Lou Williams is not very good. And they had just started. At the beginning of the series, they had just started to look like the full selves because Montrez Harrell came to the bubble late. Lou Williams came to the bubble, had to leave the bubble, and got into that trouble. So they hadn't had that much on-court time in the bubble, and they were just starting to look good and everything. But then stuff like this happened. So I know a lot of the blame is going to go on Paul George as he does deserve a decent amount of blame. But overall, the series, he was not terrible. He put up a stinker in Game 7, which is like everybody's going to remember Game 7. They won't remember Game 2. They won't remember Game 5. They're going to remember Game 7 because that is the one that sent you home. Uh, but overall, in this series, he wasn't terrible. Series number one, we like, man, where the heck is Paul George? Luckily, he got Kawhi. But in this series, he wasn't terrible. Um, but this game, this game, on the other hand, disgusting. The one shot he's in that corner and he's wide open and he hit the top of the corner of the backboard is embarrassing. It's embarrassing when I do it at the YMCA. I'm bad at basketball, but it's embarrassing when I do it. But when you have a pro athlete that's an all-star caliber player that a team gave up 700 first-round picks plus a young talent that looks like a future all-star and another guy that's really good in the league to get you and you're doing stuff like that, on the reg, it is even worse. It is even worse. But again, this is not all about Paul George. He put up a stinker this game, but overall in the series, he was not bad. Kawhi Leonard is a player that we don't, as I say we because I'm a part of, of like the NBA fandom, don't really talk about too much when Kawhi has a bad game. And the reason for that is that Kawhi doesn't do anything but hoop, right? When Paul George has a bad game, you start thinking about the time he says Damian Lillard had a bad, oh, that was a bad shot about Damian Lillard. Or all of the other times he's yapped at the mouth and you're like, bro, you can't even back it up. Kawhi just shows up in hoops in these interviews. He doesn't do anything. So it's hard to, to look at Kawhi and think anything other than the basketball player. But we need to start holding him to the same standard that we hold LeBron, Dame, uh, now Giannis. He needs to be in this conversation. And this is the first time we've really seen this from him in recent years uh, just because he had been so good, especially in the playoffs throughout his course of his career. So this is the first time we've ever seen him, like, fail as an NBA NBA star, because, I mean, it happened a few times when he was in San Antonio, but he, I, he wasn't the star. He wasn't a top five, top six type player there, but now he is, and he couldn't get them over the hump. I was expecting 40 shots. Didn't I get 40 shots? Didn't I get 40 shots? So I believe that Doc Rivers might be out of there, which is, which is crazy to say. I'm pretty sure it was Kawhi Leonard that was like, I will sign here if y'all can get me Paul George. So there you go, Kawhi. You know what I'm saying? This is exactly what you wanted. This is exactly what you wanted. Um, but they just didn't have any fight in them ever in these last couple games. Right? It was a period of time, and I can't remember if this was late third quarter, early fourth quarter, but I was just watching, and obviously they were they were cold because this lead was growing and growing and growing. And they were – no, this is halfway through the fourth quarter, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't even really notice it. But it's popped up on the screen that the Clippers had not scored a field goal in the first six and a half minutes of the fourth quarter. Again, I'm just watching, and I'm I'm watching it, and I realize that they're being bad, but I didn't realize that in the fourth quarter of a closeout game in a game seven, a win-and-go-home situation, they couldn't put a ball in the basket for six minutes as a favorite in the NBA. There is a possession where I, this is after the six-minute mark. Paul George is like, we need to get an easy one. He went to the back, he went to the, the low post, was backing somebody up. Oh, they are not budging, and he turned around and just threw it. He just threw it. He didn't see where he was throwing it, and it was an automatic turnover. And I'm like, those are the type of things you cannot have. And I'm gonna take a page out of my one of my co-host P's book. Again, through the wire is my podcast. My co-host P has said this on the show before. This is before they started to blow this lead. He said this going into the playoffs. So you know what? He's looking like a genius right now. That like this Clippers team just didn't they didn't have the general, the floor general that you really look to on championship teams. They didn't have anybody on the roster that when a situation is – is and we just went six straight minutes without scoring, they didn't have a guy that would get people in their places but like, okay, we're scoring this possession. Kawhi is a guy that can hit that shot. He just so he just didn't do it. But they didn't have a guy like a LeBron – I mean, nobody's like LeBron, but I'm just using previous NBA champion. We didn't have a LeBron. They don't have a LeBron. They don't have a Draymond Green. They don't have – I mean, Steph Curry can fit that as well. I mean, and, and, and usually it is in the point guard position. 
right? And their point guard is Patrick Beverly. And Patrick Beverly is my guy, but it's so hard sometimes watching him because of all of the antics. I wish he would just hoop. You know what I'm saying? Stop flailing. And, and there was a possession. There was two possessions early in the second half where he came up. He shot a flow to air ball from four feet away. Then the very next possession, he came up and threw the ball over his head trying to draw a foul. A floor general, which this team would have needed, is not making those two plays. Not setting the, the atmosphere like that fresh out of the ha- out of halftime. So overall, this team was extremely disappointed. I, I would have loved to see L.A. versus L.A., but if this L.A. wasn't the better team, then bring me the Nuggets. I'm not counting the Nuggets out. Nobody should be counting the Nuggets out anymore. Sure, the Lakers will be the favorite in the series, as they should be. But nobody should be like, oh, this is about to be a cakewalk because the way this Denver Nuggets team has fought every single series in the last couple of years, I'm not even just talking this year, they should be on people's radar as a team you can't just push over because you would think you got them. You would think you got them, and they're just playing possum, and then they jump out and they attack, and it's over with like that. So shout out to Jamal Murray, boy. He just put out one of the best game seven performances I've seen with 40 points, five assists, four, four rebounds, and then Jokic putting up 16, 22, and 13. Oh, my God. I didn't even notice he had 22 rebounds to looking at this box score. And they did this without even getting, like, big contributions from anybody on their bench. And that had always been a thing with me going into the season that they didn't really have, like, bench production like that. It didn't really hurt today. It didn't really hurt today. So, yeah, Clippers, disappointing. Think about it like this. They had an all-defensive level player, an MVP caliber player. Again, he won't get that many votes because he had the low management throughout the season or whatever you want to call it. They had two six-man-of-the-year candidates. They had... Oh, they had two all-defensive players because didn't Patrick Beverly make it this year too? And all of this, a coach that was in Coach of the Year conversations last year because of the great things he did to, to get the Clippers to the playoffs. What else did they have? Um, they won. People had them as a winner to trade that last slash buyout when they picked up Marcus Morris because Marcus Morris was averaging like 18 points per game and shooting an extreme efficiency when he played for the Knicks. They had everything in their corner. They won the buyout because they picked up Reggie Jackson, who was unplayable this series, but he was the best buyout point guard on the market. They did all of this to lose in the second round. It's crazy. Um, But again, it usually takes these type of teams a year before they're actually there, but at least those other teams that I referenced made it to the finals. That's all I really got to say. Um, I'm excited to get back into basketball. Um, Conference finals, see LeBron versus... Jamal Murray, I guess. LeBron versus Jokic. Come on, what am I doing? LeBron versus Jokic. All right, I'm out, though. Thank you all so much. Peace.